Law and economics or economic analysis of law is the application of economic theory specifically microeconomic theory to the analysis of law that began mostly with scholars from the Chicago School of Economics. Economic concepts are used to explain the effects of laws, to assess which legal rules are economically efficient, and to predict which legal rules will be promulgated. Topic relationship to other disciplines and approaches as used by lawyers and legal scholars, the phrase law and economics refers to the application of microeconomic analysis to legal problems. Because of the overlap between legal systems and political systems, some of the issues in law and economics are also raised in political economy, constitutional economics and political science. Approaches to the same issues from Marxist and critical theory, Frankfurt School perspectives usually do not identify themselves as law and economics. For example, research by members of the critical legal studies movement and the sociology of law considers many of the same fundamental issues as does work labeled law and economics, though from a vastly different perspective. The one wing that represents a non-neoclassical approach to law and economics is the continental mainly German tradition that sees the concept starting out of the governance and public policy approach and the German historical school of economics. This view is represented in the Elgar Companion to Law and Economics, 2nd ed. 2005, and though not exclusively in the European Journal of Law and Economics. Here, consciously non-neoclassical approaches to economics are used for the analysis of legal and administrative governance problems. Topic origin and history As early as in the 18th century, Adam Smith discussed the economic effects of mercantilist legislation. However, to apply economics to analyze the law regulating non-market activities is relatively new. A European law and economics movement around 1900 did not have any lasting influence. In 1961, Ronald Coase and Guido Calabresi independently from each other published two groundbreaking articles, The Problem of Social Cost and Some Thoughts on Risk Distribution and the Law of Torts. This can be seen as the starting point for the modern school of law and economics. Harold Lunau, the head of the Volcker Fund, not only financed F. A. Hayek in the U.S. starting in 1946, but he shortly thereafter financed Aaron directors coming to the University of Chicago in order to set up there a new center for scholars in law and economics. The university was headed by Robert Maynard Hutchins, a close collaborator of Lunau's in setting up this Chicago school. The university already had Frank Knight, George Stigler, Henry Simons, and Ronald Coase, a strong base of libertarian scholars. Soon, it would also have not just Hayek himself, but director's brother-in-law and Stigler's friend Milton Friedman, and also Robert Fogel, Robert Lucas, Eugene Fama, Richard Posner, and Gary Becker. The historians Robert Van Horn and Philip Murawski described these developments, in their The Rise of the Chicago School of Economics chapter in The Road from Mont Pelerin 2009, and historian Bruce Caldwell a great admirer of von Hayek filled in more details of the account in his chapter, The Chicago School, Hayek, and Neoliberalism, in Building Chicago Economics 2011. Van Horn a Hayek critic filled in yet more details of this history in a Seattle University Law Review article Chicago's Shifting Attitude Toward Concentrations of Business Power 1934-1962 explaining how the influence of Lunau and other corporate funders wrenched the Chicago School away from its predecessor's common support for antitrust. Van Horn argues that the opposition to antitrust, and the acceptance of corporate monopoly power and control by oligopolies such as Germany's and Italy's fascists had always supported, which came to be championed by Robert Bork and others at Chicago, had their actual origins in America's corporate boardrooms. In 1958, Director founded the Journal of Law and Economics, which he co-edited with Nobel laureate Ronald Coase, and which helped to unite the fields of law and economics with far-reaching influence. In 1962, he helped to found the Committee on a Free Society. Director's appointment to the faculty of the University of Chicago Law School in 1946 began a half-century of intellectual productivity, although his reluctance about publishing left few writings behind. He taught antitrust courses at the law school with Edward Levi, who eventually would serve as Dean of Chicago's Law School, President of the University of Chicago, and as U.S. Attorney General in the Ford administration. After retiring from the University of Chicago School of Law in 1965, Director relocated to California and took a position at Stanford University's Hoover Institution. He died September 11, 2004, at his home in Los Altos Hills, California, ten days before his 103rd birthday. 
In the early 1970s, Henry Mann a former student of Coe's set out to build a center for law and economics at a major law school. He began at Rochester, worked at Miami, but was soon made unwelcome, moved to Emory, and ended up at George Mason. The last soon became a center for the education of judges, many long out of law school and never exposed to numbers in economics. Mann also attracted the support of the John M. Olin Foundation, whose support accelerated the movement. Today, Olin centers or programs for law and economics exist at many universities. Topic positive and normative law and economics Economic analysis of law is usually divided into two subfields, positive and normative. Topic positive law and economics Positive law and economics uses economic analysis to predict the effects of various legal rules. So, for example, a positive economic analysis of tort law would predict the effects of a strict liability rule as opposed to the effects of a negligence rule. Positive law and economics has also at times purported to explain the development of legal rules, for example the common law of torts, in terms of their economic efficiency. Topic normative law and economics Normative law and economics goes one step further and makes policy recommendations based on the economic consequences of various policies. The key concept for normative economic analysis is efficiency, in particular, allocative efficiency. A common concept of efficiency used by law and economics scholars is Pareto efficiency. A legal rule is Pareto efficient if it could not be changed so as to make one person better off without making another person worse off. A weaker conception of efficiency is Caldor Hicks efficiency. A legal rule is Caldor Hicks efficient if it could be made Pareto efficient by some parties compensating others as to offset their loss. Topic important scholars Important figures include the Nobel Prize winning economists Ronald Coase and Gary Becker, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit Judges Frank Easterbrook and Richard Posner, Andre Schleifer and other distinguished scholars such as Robert Cooter, Hans Bernd Schaefer, Henry Mann, William Lands, and A. Mitchell Polinsky. Guido Calabresi, judge for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, wrote in depth on this subject. His book The Costs of Accidents, A Legal and Economic Analysis 1970, has been cited as influential in its extensive treatment of the proper incentives and compensation required in accident situations. Calabresi took a different approach in Ideals, Beliefs, Attitudes, and the Law 1985, where he argued. Who is the cheapest avoider of a cost, depends on the valuations put on acts, activities and beliefs by the whole of our law and not on some objective or scientific notion." 69 <inaudible> Influence The economic analysis of law has been influential in the United States as well as elsewhere. Judicial opinions use economic analysis and the theories of law and economics with some regularity, in the U.S. but also, increasingly, in Commonwealth countries and in Europe. The influence of law and economics has also been felt in legal education, with graduate programs in the subject being offered in a number of countries. The influence of law and economics in civil law countries may be gauged from the availability of textbooks of law and economics, in English as well as in other European languages Schaefer and Ott 2004, Mackay 2013. Many law schools in North America, Europe, and Asia have faculty members with a graduate degree in economics. In addition, many professional economists now study and write on the relationship between economics and legal doctrines. Anthony Cronman, former dean of Yale Law School, has written that, "...the intellectual movement that has had the greatest influence on American academic law in the past quarter century of the 20th century," is law and economics. Criticisms <coughs> 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 Despite its influence, the law and economics movement has been criticized from a number of directions. This is especially true of normative law and economics. Because most law and economics scholarship operates within a neoclassical framework, fundamental criticisms of neoclassical economics have been drawn from other, competing frameworks, though there are numerous internal critiques as well. Yet other schools of economic thought have emerged and have been applied to the work of law and economics in, for example, the work of Edgardo Buscaglia and Robert Cooter on Law and Economics of Development. Topic. Rational choice theory 
Critics of the law and economics movements have argued that normative economic analysis does not capture the importance of human rights and concerns for distributive justice. Some of the heaviest criticisms of the classical law and economics come from the critical legal studies movement, in particular Duncan Kennedy and Mark Kelman. Topic: <laughs> Pareto efficiency. Relatedly, additional critique has been directed toward the assumed benefits of law and policy designed to increase allocative efficiency when such assumptions are modeled on first best Pareto optimal general equilibrium conditions. Under the theory of the second best, for example, if the fulfillment of a subset of optimal conditions cannot be met under any circumstances, it is incorrect to conclude that the fulfillment of any subset of optimal conditions will necessarily result in an increase in allocative efficiency. Consequently, any expression of public policy whose purported purpose is an unambiguous increase in allocative efficiency for example, consolidation of research and development costs through increased mergers and acquisitions resulting from a systematic relaxation of antitrust laws is, according to critics, fundamentally incorrect, as there is no general reason to conclude that an increase in allocative efficiency is more likely than a decrease. Essentially, the first best Neoclassical analysis fails to properly account for various kinds of general equilibrium feedback relationships that result from intrinsic Pareto imperfections. Another critique comes from the fact that there is no unique optimal result. Warren Samuels, in his 2007 book, The Legal Economic Nexus, argues. Efficiency in the Pareto sense cannot dispositively be applied to the definition and assignment of rights themselves, because efficiency requires an antecedent determination of the rights 23 to 4. Responses Law and economics has adapted to some of these criticisms see contemporary developments below. One critic, John D. Hansen of Harvard Law School, argues that our legal, economic, political, and social systems are unduly influenced by an individualistic model that assumes dispositionism. The idea that outcomes are the result of our dispositions, economists would say, preferences. Instead, Hansen argues, we should look to the situation both inside of us including cognitive biases and outside of us family, community, social norms, and other environmental factors that have a much larger impact on our actions than mere choice. Hansen has written many law review articles on the subject. Topic. Contemporary developments Law and economics has developed in a variety of directions. One important trend has been the application of game theory to legal problems. Other developments have been the incorporation of behavioral economics into economic analysis of law, and the increasing use of statistical and econometrics techniques. Within the legal academy, the term socio-economics has been applied to economic approaches that are self-consciously broader than the neoclassical tradition. See also Topic Notes Topic Further reading Kai Pernhagen Never the Twain Shall Meet? A Critical Perspective on Cultural Limits Between Internal Continental Dogmatism and Consequential U.S. Style Law and Economics Theory in Klaus Mathis Law and Economics in Europe Springer Science, pp. 3-21, available at 1. Bocayert, Boudevain, and Jarrett de Gurist, eds. 2000. Encyclopedia of Law and Economics Edward Elgar, online version. Coase, Ronald 1990. The Firm, the Market, and the Law Chicago, University of Chicago Press, reprint ed. ISBN 0-226-11101-6. Cooter, Robert and Thomas Eulen, 2012. Law and Economics Addison Wesley Longman, 6th edition. ISBN 0-321-33634-8 Friedman, David Law and Economics. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics, v. 3, pp. 144-48, blank, 2000. Law's Order, Princeton University Press. Chapter links. Links. Blank, 2001. Law's Order, What Economics Has to Do with the Law and Why It Matters. 
ISBN 978-0691090092. Martin Gelter and Christopher Gretchenig, History of Law and Economics, forthcoming in Encyclopedia on Law and Economics. Georgia Kopoulos, Nicholas L. 2005. Principles and Methods of Law and Economics, Basic Tools for Normative Reasoning Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-82681-0. Christopher Gretchenig and Martin Gelter, The Transatlantic Divergence in Legal Thought, American Law and Economics vs. German Doctrinalism, Hastings International and Comparative Law Review 2008, Vol. 31, pp. 295–360 Kennedy, Duncan Law and Economics from the Perspective of Critical Legal Studies from the New Palgrave Dictionary of Economics and the Law PDF Kornhauser, Lewis the Economic Analysis of Law, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Mestimacher, Ernst Joachim A Legal Theory Without Law, Posner v. Hayek on Economic Analysis of Law. Tübingen, Bohr. ISBN 978-3-16-149276-1. Mackay, Ajahn Law and Economics for Civil Law Systems, Cheltenham. Edward Elgar, ISBN 978-1848443099, softcover forthcoming 2014-2 Polinsky, A. Mitchell, and Stephen Chevelle 2008. Law, Economic Analysis of. The New Palgrave Dictionary of Economics, 2nd edition. Abstract and pre-publication copy. Posner, Richard A. 2011. Economic Analysis of Law New York, Wolters Kluwer Law and Business, 8th edition. ISBN 978-0735594425. Blank, 2006. A Review of Stephen Chevelle's Foundations of Economic Analysis of Law, Journal of Economic Literature, 44 2, pp. 405-14 Press Plus. Schaefer, Hans Berndt and Klaus Ott 2004, Economic Analysis of Civil Law, Cheltenham, Edward Elgar Publishing, ISBN 1843762773 Chevelle, Stephen 2004. Foundations of Economic Analysis of Law. Harvard University Press. Description and scroll to chapter preview links. Rabe, Jean-Philippe, The Legal Structure of the Firm, Accounting, Economics, and Law, Volume 1, ISS, 1 Article 5, available at, https colon slash slash web dot archive dot org slash web slash 20111122061936 slash http colon slash slash www.bpress dot com slash ale slash volume 1 slash is 1 slash 5 slash 2011. Topic. External links Law and Economics. Article in the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy.